Welcome to our dive on the Tribal Class Destroyer, His Majesty's ship Maori. She's 115 meters long and has a beam of 11 meters. An important reward of this dive is the understanding of the history of this once proud and mighty destroyer. Commissioned in 1938 with a crew of 190 officers and men, it was named after the indigenous people of New Zealand and cost around £350,000 sterling. Her first duties were to escort convoys in the Mediterranean until she was relocated to the North Sea where she took part in the Norwegian campaign. In May 1941 she was heavily involved in the pursuit and eventual destruction of the infamous and incredibly powerful German battleship Bismarck. And swordfish torpedo bombers took off to fly in the face of terrific anti-aircraft fire. Air torpedoes reduced the speed of the Bismarck, enabling the British battleship to catch up on her flying start. And I realized then that although we'd been Bismarck, we were quite unmarked. Torpedo bombers had done their job. The big ships were closing in on the Bismarck, coming in range to open fire with 16-inch guns. These are pictures taken on board one of the ships in the action, silencing the Bismarck's guns to enable the cruiser Dorsetshire to close in and sink her with torpedoes, and the Bismarck's answering back. Eyewitness accounts tell the story of the battle in dramatic detail. We were just thumping salvo after salvo into her. You could see them hit. By the time we finished, we left her burning from stem to stern. One of her, one of her mags must have blown up, and she was sinking. Sadly, whilst at anchor in Malta's Grand Harbour, on the 12th of February 1942, she received a direct hit from German aircraft. She was abandoned and sank stern first. In 1945, the wreck was cut into two pieces. The aft section was sunk out at sea. The fore section is our dive. We're surrounded by the beautiful and historic bastions of Valletta as we swim for around 120 meters to reach this truly awesome wreck. Although this wreck's top is only 9 meters from the surface, its bottom is some 15 meters deep. The visibility to find the wreck is quite good today. Finding this wreck isn't easy, so you have to get your bearings exactly right. The wreck sits upright on the sandy seabed. Because Mossamshet doesn't have a breakwater as such, the sea circulates in a more hydrodynamic way and is therefore more clear than Grand Harbour. Indeed, the amount of vegetation found here shows just how well light has penetrated this harbour. This is a benefit for both marine communities and for divers. Having said this, the visibility is still not as good as it is in open waters. Also because of the size of the wreck and the limited visibility, one can't see the whole of the Maori at once. Add to this that sand continues to settle around the wreck with the passage of time, a torch should be considered essential here for the diver. The upper sections of the wreck are quite open and easy to dive through but do notice the vegetation which shows just how long the Maori has been sitting here. Now we see the nudie branch. Nudie branches come into this world, like all other mollusks, with a shell, but they lose it as they develop into adults. This makes them vulnerable to predators. So other defensive mechanisms had to evolve, including the mimicking of toxic creatures through their vivid colors, and conversely, the blending in with their surroundings. A close relative of the nudie branch is the sea slug. Its main defense is to accumulate poisons so that it is inedible. But look at this. Here's a valve which looks brand new. Now that's something to marvel at in this modern disposable world. Things made to last. Look at the sponges growing here. They are one of the simplest forms of life and constantly regenerate, dominating the space available to them and filtering the seawater. Two scavengers now come into view, a starfish and a fireworm. The warming seas have led to an explosion in the population of the fireworm, 
They are indigenous to both the Mediterranean and the Atlantic. The copious vegetation provides camouflage for the octopus, which is a highly adaptable and intelligent creature. Indeed, he was not in the least bit afraid of us, to the extent that he befriended one of our divers. Not only does he have the advantage of camouflage, he also has his ink as well as the ability to deceive his enemies. He has one of the highest metabolic rates of all marine animals. With five hearts, it's just what one would expect. The boulders that you can see here were deposited from the bombed ruins of Valletta properties damaged during the Second World War. Some marine life has now established itself on these ruins. This is indeed a mosaic of several different habitats. The red particles that we can see are rust. This is inevitable given the age of the wreck. Although, interestingly, this rust eventually fertilizes the area. A shoal of sea bream are here sheltering from the sun. Shoals and schools are just common sense for fish. Strength in numbers. The ravages of war that Malta was subjected to have indeed left their mark, particularly on HMS Maori. In its own way, His Majesty's ship Maori is an extension of the Maritime Museum. This wasn't just a dive for us, it's a living history lesson. <laughs>